If you've ever read a Viking saga closely, really closely, you may have noticed something strange that never quite gets explained. Characters sit in enclosed rooms during winter storms. Torches burn steadily. Smoke rises cleanly. No one complains about draughts choking air or freezing winds creeping inside. These scenes aren't poetic shortcuts. They point to a real architectural trick that Norse builders mastered centuries before modern airflow science named it. What you're about to hear is not myth, not magic, and not exaggeration. It's a practical, repeatable method of creating a nearly windless interior space using only wood, stone, and an understanding of air behavior that, honestly, modern survivalists can still apply today. The overlooked saga clues that hint at the windless room trick appear quietly but consistently. In texts like Egil's Saga and the Icelandic family sagas, longhouses are described as warm refuges during violent weather, even while doors open frequently and fires burn constantly. The sagas mention smoke holes, raised platforms, and inner chambers called stofa or dingja, yet they never describe wind roaring through these spaces. That silence is meaningful. In an age when most structures leaked air badly, Norse homes did not. Archaeological reconstructions at Borg, Lance o Meadows, and Reicholt confirm what the sagas imply. Viking builders designed airflow paths deliberately, not accidentally. The core of the windless room trick relies on pressure balance rather than sealing everything shut. Viking longhouses were not airtight, and that was the point. Instead of fighting wind, they redirected it. The main entrance was often offset, never aligned straight through the building. This prevented a pressure tunnel from forming. When wind struck the exterior wall, it dispersed around the structure instead of forcing its way inside. Inside, secondary partitions created buffer zones. These acted like airlocks, slowing moving air before it reached living spaces. The roof design was just as critical to the system working properly. Norse roofs were steep, layered and heavy, usually built with turf over birch bark. This mass stabilized internal temperatures and reduced pressure fluctuations. Smoke exited through a central roof opening, but that opening was never a simple hole. It was positioned high, narrow, and sometimes hooded with wood or stone. Rising warm air created a slow, consistent upward draw that pulled smoke out without pulling wind in. This natural convection meant air moved gently upward instead of horizontally across the room. The placement of the hearth completed the system. Viking fires were centred, not placed against walls. This allowed heat to rise evenly and prevented cold zones from forming near the floor. Benches and sleeping platforms were raised, keeping people above the coldest air layer. In practical terms, this meant a person could sit comfortably in still air while wind battered the outside walls. The room felt calm because physically it was. This knowledge wasn't accidental. Norse seafarers understood wind behaviour intimately. They sailed by reading air currents, waves and pressure changes. That same awareness carried into their buildings. The windless room trick was simply seamanship applied to architecture. Control the flow, reduce turbulence, and never allow a straight line for pressure to travel through. Applying this knowledge today is surprisingly practical. If you're building a cabin, survival shelter, or even retrofitting a shed, the first step is to eliminate straight-through airflow. 
Avoid aligning doors and vents directly opposite each other. Introduce a short entry, corridor, or interior wall, offset by even a meter. This alone can cut interior wind dramatically. The second step is vertical airflow control. A high vent or chimney opening should be smaller than lower air inlets. This encourages slow upward movement rather than drafts. If using a stove or fire, position it centrally when possible and allow heat to rise naturally. Raised sleeping or sitting platforms will keep occupants in the most stable air layer, just as the Vikings did. The third step is adding mass to stabilise pressure. Turf roofs worked because they were heavy, but, you know, modern equivalents can include layered insulation, earth bags, or even stacked timber. The goal is not air tightness, but resistance to sudden pressure change. When wind hits the exterior, the structure should absorb and diffuse it, not transmit it inward. What makes this trick enduring is that it requires no modern technology. No fans, no membranes, no powered ventilation. It works because it aligns with how air actually behaves. That's why it survived in oral tradition and architecture long after the Vikings themselves were gone. It also explains why reconstructed Norse houses today feel uncannily calm inside even in harsh weather. This is not a forgotten curiosity. It is a usable system. It belongs as much in modern survival planning as it did in medieval Scandinavia. The sagas didn't spell it out because their audience lived inside it. We have to read between the lines, but the evidence is there, written in wood, turf, and silence. If this kind of deep historical knowledge matters to you, if you value techniques that have survived centuries because they actually work, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Share this with anyone interested in history, survival, or traditional building wisdom. These old solutions are still speaking. We just have to listen.